Today's video idea comes per viewer request, and by viewer request, I mean multiple extended badgering sessions. <laughs> Uh, I'm just messing with you. Today, we're gonna build the cheapest brand new PC that you can buy in the United States today, and then we're gonna try and play some games on the little abomination, which kinda went as badly as you'd expect. Honestly, if I had to describe this build in one word, it would be industrial chemical accident. And weirdly, this is like the only system that all of these parts are actually in stock at the moment. So if you wanna buy a PC right now, this may kinda be your only bet. Um, but yeah, all in all, the system cost less than $200 to build. But before that, we have a sponsor for today's video to help pay for the little potato. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. You can learn about building confidence or doing watercolors in the woods, Art journaling for self-care is something that Anna's been getting into lately. And you can also learn about plants at home to uplift your spirit and space, which is pretty cool. This is a class by Christopher Griffin, and it's for people who want the positive power of plants that look all nice inside. It's a it's a good way to decorate your house without knowing anything about decoration, if, if, if that's something that you're into. As Hardware Canucks has showed all of us, I probably can't talk about them in an ad spot, but that's okay. Skillshare is also affordable at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So it means that no matter what terrible things 2021 brings you, you will still be able to learn new skills. The first thousand people to use the link in my description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. You know, just to dip your toes in there and see how you feel about it before taking the plunge. So with that, thank you very much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And here we have the pile of disappointment. Starting out with this little box, which is not only the CPU, but also the graphics card for today's build and the cooler. So this is like 75% of the build. Uh, now it's a Celeron G5900. And as we all know, Intel reserves its Celeron branding for only the best of the best. It's a dual core CPU with no hyper threading. I'm not entirely sure why Intel still sells two threaded CPUs in 2021. I guess it's for the glory of Cthulhu or whatever other reason Intel makes all their dumbass decisions. As far as the integrated graphics goes, it's got Intel UHD 610 graphics in it, which is like the UHD 620 graphics in all of their normal people's CPUs that's just been stabbed in the throat a couple times. But not only that, we're pairing the Celeron with a single 4 gig stick of RAM, so the performance on the system is going to be a real kick in the balls. The part that I'm by far the most worried about is the power supply, and it's a 500 watt single rail unit by a brand called Coolmax, which I've never heard of before, and this thing looks real sketchy. It makes me more uncomfortable than making eye contact at a urinal. Next up, we have Some Case by Rosewell. I don't actually know what it's called, but luckily, Rosewell is well known in the industry for their excellent craftsmanship, so I think we're in good hands here. I mean, just look at how tiny this box is. I'm really excited to build in this case. The motherboard I've actually used in a video before, and it's an MSI H410 MATX board, and, well, actually, I was pleasantly surprised by how well it handled a 10-core, 20-thread Intel CPU. So, yeah, it's more than up to the task of that little, little Celeron CPU. And then finally, we have the SSD, which is only 60 gigs. That means that the Windows installation is going to take up like half of the SSD, but it's an SSD in the cheapest build ever, so I'm not really complaining. This is not looking very promising here, uh, but let's get it open and have a closer look. This packaging is real poo-poo garbage, but at least the case is really nice and light, so it's not like the packaging has to stand up to too much abuse. What a beauty. Look at all of that airflow. And as they always say, nothing says high-end like a huge amount of cheap gloss black plastic. We've got some ventilated cutouts on the side. Very nice. And that paired with the very low power CPU that we're using for this build. I think this system is going to have some crazy good temperatures. 
In the back, we've got a fan included in the exhaust position. And as you can see, it's an MATX case, which will be a perfect fit for our MATX motherboard. Now, if you look in through the back, you can see there's also an intake fan. So again, temperatures are gonna be real good. And on the inside, we've got a case that takes most of its design cues from the 1970s. Cable management may be a bit of a nightmare in this case, but we'll see. Maybe it goes fine. Ah, uh, it's got a nice strong smell of factory not meeting minimum safety criteria. Next up is this beautiful weaponizable power supply. Oh, hell yeah. Whoa, it's so light. Speaking of strong chemical smells, holy crap. What is that smell? It just keeps getting stronger. Um, there's not a huge amount of connectors here, but that's good. That'll help for cable management, especially. As far as the actual rating of the power supply goes, we've got a 34 amp, 12 volt rail that does most of the heavy lifting in this beast. I feel like I need a radiation suit to interact with this thing. What the hell? But I mean, there are two peas in a pod. Oh, would you look at that? Both the power supply and the inside of this case are six month old cadaver gray. It kind of makes you feel like they were made in the same factory. Hmm, I wonder. We've got a factory fresh Celeron. Here we have the stock Intel cooler, which as far as reputation goes, is essentially the Enron of CPU coolers. There's a joke you youngins won't get. And that's it. This is like the majority of the PC. And as we all know, nothing says high performance like a combination of poo brown and fungal infection green. Come on, get, just get in there. Oh, there we go. Now I'm being a real badass today because I'm building this whole system without having checked that any of these components work. So. Yeah, I'm hopeful. Hopefully it doesn't backfire on me. Now it's SSD time. Uh, it's got a plastic body, which is quite unusual for an SSD. Also got a reasonably strong chemical smell, which seems to be a bit of a trend with these, with these really budget components. There doesn't seem to be any dedicated SSD mounting, so I guess we're gonna have to just, just, just that's, that's kinda gonna have to do. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Let's see if this human rights violation works. Uh, turn it on like that. Oh, someone's in a fan. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, that may or may not have been the uh, fan cable being stuck in the <laughs> in, in in the stock Intel cooler, but problem solved. Let's see now if it if it works. Uh, monitor overclock failed. What you talking about? You're you're a loser, motherboard. You can't overclock. Anyway, let's install Windows and see how this thing runs. Okay, there we go. We're sitting at a solid. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say solid, but we're sitting at around at around what? Just under 20 frames per second here. It's looking fresh. Um, but I mean, it's running, you know, we're at 720p here. Again, I don't know how well this is going to show up in the video because there's a lot of upscaling going on, you know, in like Premiere Pro and stuff, but 
<laughs> and it looks genuinely awful. But what's interesting is that the CPU is actually stuck at 100% utilization. So I, I, I don't, I, <laughs> I actually think that the CPU is bottlenecking the iGPU, <laughs> which... <laughs> I don't think that's something I've ever seen before. Yo, that's so crazy that the, depending on the situation, it's not the iGPU that's the bottom. <laughs> CSGO at 720p is actually not too bad. Uh, we're still getting the CPU bottlenecking the iGPU, which is hilarious. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's... I, I, okay, I wouldn't call it playable. Like, I wouldn't want to competitively play CSGO with with this frame rate. But, you know, it's it's not the worst. There's not much going on here, though. Because, you know, with CSGO, you can't use overlays and play online, for example. So, yeah, I'm just walking around an empty map here. So, the frame rate may be worse with stuff like... Actually, I should go buy a smoke grenade. But, I mean, still, it's not, it's not terrible. You know, it's kind of playable. It's not looking great for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I mean, that's not something I'd call playable. This is only the built-in benchmark because it's late and I don't feel like starting a new game. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're getting nine frame <laughs> frames per second. You know what they say, nine equals great time. This is at 720p with the lowest settings available. So this is actually the first game where the CPU doesn't bottleneck the iGPU. So, I mean, it's it's close. Hey, Far Cry loaded in. It failed the first time, but the second attempt is... I don't, I don't know if I'd call this working, but it's, it's, it's launched in. Yeah, this is, this is pretty much not running. And I actually think the reason that it's not is because of RAM. I, I think because Far Cry is an open world game, it it can't run on four gigs of ram half-life 2 is always like my go-to test for like loser hardware um and it seems to be holding up pretty well i mean i've had much worse half-life 2 gaming experiences than this hey ow okay so half-life 2 isn't using that much ram it's it's running pretty well i mean this is very playable and we're at 1080p settings are pretty much cranked one of the reasons that I really like using Half-Life 2 as an example uh, with all of this, you know, like really lame ass hardware, it's because even with something like this, which really struggles to play anything, you can still play games and have a good time with it. And with that, it's obviously a complete potato. I mean, was anybody expecting anything differently for just like the bottom of the barrel components? None of this is designed to be gamed on at all. You know, and it's not just performance wise that you're gonna have issues with it. Reliability may be a problem as well with that chemical hazard of a, of a power supply in there. This whole room still smells like a fracking site. Honestly, it's ridiculous. However, if you don't live in the United States and you don't have the option to buy like a secondhand Dell Optiplex and throw like a low profile graphics card in there to get much better gaming performance for the same money it's not the worst thing ever like it's not like you can't game with it at all yes you can't play modern AAA titles but you know most of them suck anyway right so like you can still have a good time with this system and if it's your only option it's not the worst thing ever except for that power supply i would not want to have that running in my house for any extended period of time lest it summons beelzebub or whatever um, but with that thank you very much for watching if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one and until the next video bye bye